where do things stand with your, your secondary just uh, in terms of injured guys and whether it's all practice today? Uh, they're working through treatment, um, trying to progress through the week, and we'll, we'll know more as the week progresses. Was it those injuries that prompted you guys to inquire about Eric Reed this week? Any, anytime it's uh, the stance by John, Kyle, Adam, and Martin, anytime you have an opportunity to add a good football player, those uh, when the opportunity presents itself, um, obviously, uh, E. Reed is familiar with our system, and he knows we know him, uh, comfortable with him. So obviously, it didn't work out, but anytime you have that opportunity, you you explore it. Does it seem like Tart won't play this week? I mean, where, where is he in his recovery? Same thing. He's working through treatment and trying to get himself up to speed, but he is uh, obviously still in play. How do you think those other two did uh, on Sunday in Kansas City with uh, Exum and Reed put together? You know, for the um, for, for those two, uh, not having worked together and uh, from a communication standpoint and grinding through grinding through the week and everything that the Chiefs present, I thought they did a, a admirable job, a, a good job of uh, – of uh, playing their tails off and uh, trying to do right. Uh, so uh, pleased with the direction they're going to. Obviously, they can get a lot better uh, all the way across the board we can, including myself, but uh, the, um, uh, like the direction they're going in. What went wrong so often in that first half in Kansas City? You know, uh, 35 points and a half is unacceptable. And, uh, and it's going to sound trivial and it's going to sound very elementary, but it, it comes down to uh, obviously tackling, which needs to get better. It needs to get better. It's, it's, uh, it's not very good, obviously. But uh, when you look at it, uh, on that first drive, we had a third and 15. Uh, they completed a screen pass to get it down to one, which they completed uh, or converted on a speed option, which converted to a touchdown. The next series, we had a third and 15. Um, that we had the PI on, so there's two field goals that uh, we could have held them to. And then the very next drive, the third and five, where Mahomes does a very good job uh, scrambling, makes a heck of a play. And in my mind, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, I feel like we should get off the field right there, hold them to another field goal. And in the two minute drive, uh, Kelsey makes that unbelievable catch on third and nine, which extends the drive, and they score another touchdown. So it comes down to tackling and third down. Uh, and it's that it is that simple because if we take care of those third and long situations, um, as a as a defensive unit, uh, coaches included, um, I feel like there's there's three field goals and a non touchdown. So it's a, and a, the outlook is a completely different completely different deal. Guys are, are maybe pressing, trying to make the big play, looking for the first interception, more fumbles. No, you know it's. Uh, Overall, there, there's some plays, obviously, that uh, from a communication standpoint, some stuff just did not look uh, as clean as it was supposed to. But uh, I don't think it's a, um, an issue of people pressing. Um, you know, it's just when you give an offense like the Chiefs opportunities, and that's where tackling third down, letting them have opportunities and extra plays, you're, they're, they're going to they're gonna do damage. They're one of the best in the league. And so when you have an opportunity on third and 15, twice, uh, third and 10 during two minute, uh, third and goal from the five and, and you got the quarterback running or you have them in the backfield uh, with an opportunity to bring them down, you have to take advantage of those opportunities. And, um, and if you do, then that high octane offense looks very pedestrian. But uh, we didn't and they look all world. Fred and Ruben had the most missed tackles upon viewing the film. Was it bad angles or did they have guys wrapped up they couldn't finish? You know, the big emphasis uh, Obviously, always relentlessly trying to study it to, to give our guys the best chance to, to improve. And uh, it's very clear um, when, you, when you turn on the tape that we are actually we're, we're lunging and ducking our heads at, at the point of attack. And uh, when, you, when you teach tackling, everything that we talk about is you've got to put your body, you've got to run your body through their body, get a body on a body, step on their toes, wrap up, keep your feet moving, drive for five, and get them to the ground. So it's... Uh, when you look at all our missed tackles, it's more people lunging, uh, head down, um, uh, grasping and la launching at uh, feet, trying to make arm tackles. And that's, that's not what we teach, obviously. But somewhere along the line, there's a disconnect. And so as coaches, we've got to do a better job uh, getting that message across. And so again, this week, trying to emphasize step on their toes, get your body on a body and wrap up. And, uh, and hopefully that translates into a better tackling performance on Sunday. How much of a challenge is that working on it, uh, given that you don't get real physical 
during the practice week? So maybe, maybe one uh, yesterday, so, uh, and you guys will see it out there today, it's, uh, we have tackling circuits every uh, padded practice, uh, have been for, for, the year, for the last year and a half. And um, yesterday was the first time that we had the tackling circuit uh, without pads, uh, just to, to bring emphasis to tracking uh, and stepping on toes, all the different things that we're trying to emphasize. Today will be about running our body through people uh, thudding, wrapping up, keeping our feet moving through contact, not getting dead legged. So again, going through that tackling circuit and then transferring it over to team run and team pass when we do have pads on to ensure that we are doing everything we can to prepare to tackle on Sunday. What did you make of Ruben's game? And what were his missed tackles? And I know you just touched on it, but what, was he over pursuing? And was he maybe under pursuing? Uh, that uh, goes back to what I explained. We're, we're actually breaking down and slowing down and lunging way too soon, and we need to run through contact, put our body through people, and uh, we're trying to dive and wrap at legs rather than run through uh, tacklers. And we need to understand that we are we are fast defense, and we have to trust our speed and step on their toes. And if you when you go back and look at that tape, we're not stepping on toes. We're lunging at the point of attack, and that's what's leading to all those arm tackles and missed tackles. And so hopefully. Hopefully we got a good beat on it. Uh, it was very evident last week uh, versus the uh, Chiefs, and uh, we'll get it get it taught and I mean, hopefully good results. Ruben, obviously, he's shown that, that he's a good tackler, particularly in space. Do, do you maybe attribute some of that to the fact that he did miss two games and had sort of, kind of an elongated break? Um, I'd like to give him. I, I I would love to give him that leeway. Uh, Ruben will not take it. You know, it's. Uh, when, when you step on the field and you're in between the white as a professional, you're expected to do your job, and you're expected to do it at the highest level possible. And uh, and if you asked Ruben if he was rusty, uh, he'll look you right in the eye and say, no, he's got to make the play. And it's the same thing that uh, that I would tell him. So obviously, um, he'll he'll be much better this week. Uh, and he's he's there's no excuses. No. Over your career, have you found missed tackles or good tackling to be contagious? Something that if you know. It falls in line, and a couple times early in the game, it could it could go that way, or if it falls out of line, it could go bad. Um, yeah, I mean, you could look at it that way. I mean, offense starts getting confidence, and defense starts losing confidence, and now we start guessing on how we're gonna, you know, you just abort mission when things don't seem to work. But uh, stick to the plan, stick to the fundamentals, stick to what you practiced. And uh, but uh, as far as a contagious thing, I, I I guess, but that'd be more mental than than physical. In Minnesota, you guys played well after halftime against Detroit. You played pretty well the first three quarters, and then you played well after halftime in KC. What, what's the key to putting together a full 60-minute performance, particularly on the road? I, I can shoot. I'll, I'll go through them all real quick. Uh, Minnesota, uh, we were not very good on third down in the first half, and, uh, and we were not tackling very well. And then we come back in the second half, and we played very well on third down, had had one poor third down, which led to a 34-yarder uh, that led to the touchdown. But uh, overall, third down was good in the, in the second half. Detroit, we were playing very well in the first half, tackling um, and third down. That The whole Detroit game can be summed up into that third and 17, 66-yarder to Golden Tate, in my opinion. Uh, when you give Matt Stafford an opportunity, he's one of the best comeback quarterbacks in all of football, active quarterbacks anyway. You give him opportunities, he's going to take advantage of it. And right there, we've got to put him to bed. And then, of course, uh, last week, uh, the the inability to uh, get off the field on third and 15 and holding the field goals on two stri- uh, set on those first two drives, where instead of 14 nothing and six to nothing, uh, would completely change the entire outlook of the entire game. And we get into the second half, our tackling was much better, uh, third down was much better. Uh, and it started with one. It started with them dropping a pass. And uh, it just snowballed into us uh, being able to execute, gaining confidence. And um, you could say they, they eased up off the brakes or whatever. But I promise you, if, if Andy had a chance, he was going to put up 60. He was trying to take shots. They were trying to throw the ball in the air. And, and, uh, and our guys did a great job executing in the second half. Uh, Kyle talked about even before Richard got hurt Sunday, he changed his practice schedule, give him some more rest. Is that something with his leg, I guess, left leg in particular, he might just be have to deal with and monitor throughout the season? For sure. It's it's no different. I, I guess, uh, you know, Joe gets his vet days. Uh, you know, it's the same thing. When you're, when you're dealing with a, a, a man like Richard Sherman, who's who's tested, who's tried, who's been, who's got all the experience in the world that he has, obviously you're, 
you try to take care of him to, to get him through the entire 16 game season so he can be healthy and ready to roll on Sundays. What level of concern is there the fact that he had those procedures in the in the off season and now it's week three and or in week three he gets hurt? Uh, not ready to push the panic button. Uh, Sherm, Sherm is a fighter. If he can go this week, I promise you, he'll go this week. Um, and so it's, uh, Sherm will, will play through pain. He's, he's played through a torn hamstring. I've witnessed it and uh, uh, when back in his uh, younger days. So if he's, he's not always 100%. So when he, when, he, when he can reach that pain tolerance, and it's an unbelievable pain tolerance he's got, uh, he'll get out there. So I'm, I'm not ready to push a panic button on him yet, not even close. All right, thanks, guys. All right, Thank thanks, you. everybody.